sincerely apologize for the technical hitch spotted at the beginning of our presentation. Nigeria and the United Kingdom have resolved to repeal and enforce existing cooperation in a highly beneficial relations between the two countries, especially in the area of security and trade. This was when President Muhammadu Buhari engaged the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson on the margins of the 26th Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Kigali, Rwanda. Total correspondent Alamu Sambo reports on the and other engagement of President Muhammadu Buhari. During the high-level talks, both President Muhammad Buhari and Prime Minister Boris Johnson harped on what they described as strong attachment and massive partnership between Nigeria and the United Kingdom, which must be deepened and expanded going forward. Uh, an area that was also identified was in the area of clean energy. And, um, you know, Mr. President talked about the Great Green War and the efforts that we are make, uh, making uh, in Nigeria uh, to fight desertification and, uh, and also, you know, uh, climate change. And um, the UK Prime Minister talked about some British uh, energy companies, uh, clean energy companies, that also want to come and invest in Nigeria. So, um, so it was really about, you know, economic and technical cooperation. Discussions also centered on the leader of the proscribed indigenous peoples of Biafra, Namdikano, now facing trial in Nigeria. President Buhari dispelled such insinuation, saying the detained separatist leader is being given every opportunity under the law to justify all the uncomplimentary things he had been saying against Nigeria in Britain. Namdikano, he said, jumped bell before, and there are no assurances that he won't do it again if admitted to bail. The president used the opportunity to once again reiterate his resolve to respect the maximum term limit in the Nigerian constitution. And shortly after, President Muhammad Buhari granted audience to the Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness, where issues of common interest between Nigeria and Jamaica dominated discussions. The Commonwealth Secretary General Patricia Scotland also came calling to solicit the support of President Muhammad Buhari's Nigeria for the renewal of our mandate for a second two-year term in office. From Kigali, Rwanda, Adamusambu, NTA News. And still from Kigali, Rwanda, when the task are prepared by climate change of call, women and children are said to be the most impacted. This consciousness is promoting advocacy for women inclusion in climate action at the Commonwealth Health of Government meeting in Rwanda. Olivier Fanfis reports. Vulnerable women and girls on the sidelines of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, gender advocates meet to highlight the contribution of women in ensuring successful climate change resilience. Conversations promote the opinion that it is necessary to include women as vital change makers and ensure their seats at the policy and decision making table for climate action. Having alternative uh, income sources, being able to access transportation, being able to access information, um, uh, having leadership positions and being able to make decisions are all attributes of what makes a person more resilient to a climate change shock and stress. So, that, so, so they tend to, to have less of those and that's why they get affected more. There are result frameworks which are very clearly covering gender indicators right now so that uh, there is no proposal that goes without a gender marker which, which covers that. And of course, that's the bare minimum that we achieved uh, uh, till now. With increasing vulnerabilities, cities, homes and large informal communities are already feeling the harsh effects of climate change and other disaster risks. It is time to close the gap. In gender, if we want, if we are to strengthen our resilience, preparedness, coping capacity, and recovery effort. Offsetting the trend is indeed possible, possible if we are committed. This session recommends, therefore, that all sectors of society must be united in protecting the diverse communities of the Commonwealth. Onengiye Fine Face. And the news. And back home, at the repatriation exercise of internet and space pricing from Cameroon is to continue, while repatriation of Nigerians that are living in the Republic of Niger and Republic of Chad 
will resume very soon. The Technical Subcommittee of the Committee for Repatriation of IDPs, headed by Governor Mabagana Zulum of Bono State, has presented its report to the Vice President with a view to ensuring that the repatriation exercise continues unhindered. Governor Zulum spoke to Twitter correspondent G.D. Rifali after the closed door meeting with the Vice President. So what we are looking now is to see how we can repatriate uh, indigents uh, of Borno State that are living in Niger, especially those that are from Manupaturi local government area, that are willing to, Abadam local government area that are willing to come back to Niger. While we have uh, those from Goda local government area, Bama local government mainly, that are living from the Republic of Cameroon, they are also willing to come. We also have our indigents, indigents of uh, Kukawa local government and Marte local government that are living in Chad. The governor, however, said security situation in Bruno State has now improved drastically. The Director General Bureau of Public Service reforms that Suki Arabi have been speaking on the benefit that the government and Nigeria are getting from the services of the Bureau in collaboration with other agencies of the federal government. The achievement he says include the introduction of IPPIS, which has eliminated about 70,000 ghost workers. Status correspondent DJ Mifade reports. Dasuki Arabi, Director General of the Bureau of Public Services, reforms states on the strides being made by the Bureau in the execution of its core mandate of initiating, coordinating, and ensuring the full implementation of reform policies and programs for the government. We have driven a process of transformation to improve access to government services, to improve the quality of life of citizens of this country, to improve transparency and give the citizens the opportunity to participate in governance. This achievement, he says, should be celebrated as it has put the nation on a higher global ranking. As I'm talking to you, some agencies of government in Nigeria have already reached that level of world class. There is never a month that will pass that we don't receive a delegation coming from outside Nigeria to come and study how Nigeria reform its tax system, how Nigeria is implementing Treasury single account, how Nigeria is implementing IPPIS Amenia. Now, we have picked agencies of government that have reached that stage, ELA Revenue Service, Security and Exchange Commission, uh, Corporate Affairs Commission, and many others. So if we have those building blocks coming together closer, we are confident that by the year 2025, will be where we are supposed to be. The weekly executive briefing of press at the presidential villa is organized by the presidential media team in the State House, Jude Onifade, NT News. The federal government has said that the home price of premium motor spirit, PMAs, remains 165 naira per liter across all filling stations in the country. This was made known by executive director distribution system Historic and retail infrastructure of Nigerian midstream and downstream of Petroleum Regulatory Authority in Lagos. In a similar development, Ipman National President Chinedu Okoronko at a briefing in Abuja said the association had resolved to maintain the status quo even as the NNPC and the Pipeline and Product Marketing Company PPFC responded positively to the association's request by releasing products from their tank firm that can last for a two days. The impactful contributions and indelible legacies of former broadcaster, producer and dramatist, whom cultural icon, late Ambassador Shekun Uruchola resonated at the 10th memorial service held in his honor at his Iperu Remo country home in Ogun State. Nigerians were admonished to always conduct themselves in a manner that will make them live in the hearts of people after their sojourn on earth. That report will be brought to you in a subsequent bulletin. Ogun State's government has announced that the June edition of the monthly sanitation will hold between 7 to 10 in the morning across the state. In a statement by the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Environment, Azak Wajetola, explained that there will be no restriction of movement for all residents to use the opportunity of the exercise to clean their environment and drainage. 
He wants people to receive from Trumping refuse on road median as he assures that waste disposal truck will promptly be on ground to pack all the generated waste during the exercise. The statement added that all government officials and advocacy groups in the, on environment sanitation to take charge in their respective local governments. And that's news for this hour. We thank you for watching. Join us 7 p.m. for more and comprehensive news. Good afternoon.